There he is, my knight in shining armor, taking me to work. And I do realize that I am really blessed. I know so many people can't do that to get to work, but so I'm really, really, really grateful. I'm just looking at the buses and I'm just thinking, I almost feel guilty because I think people have got no choice but to get on the bloody bus today. I'm not joking, I really do. I feel um, like I feel, I've got up this morning with an overwhelming feeling for... I know, I mean, this is really weird, guys. I mean, I'm heading into central London as a Londoner, as a filmmaker, photographer, writer, you name it. And I'm going in central London because I want to see my city. I've never felt fonder of my city and I want to go into it. And I'm, I'm, I, I, just want to, I just want to see what is and isn't happening there because the last time I remember London having absolutely no movement, bizarrely, was as the bells rang all across London for Lady, for Princess Diana's funeral. Mm. Do you remember that day? It was, it was mm. bizarre. And that was chilling and moving, and I just want to go in and just see it, in a sense, laid bare. Because it will all come back. We'll, we will all come back. We will all come back. This is all going to come yeah. back from this, but I think things in London certainly are going to have to get a lot, lot stricter before they get better. I mean, my only hope... My no, not my only hope. What we have, so what like has Princess to happen. Leia, she says you're my only hope. <laughs> what has to happen out of this afterwards is that we're all better people. That's what has to happen because there has to be some reason for it. Listen, the most important thing is we're all scared, and what people do when they're scared and fearful is they often, without meaning to, swipe out, her, think of themselves and neglect others. Not all, but some. It's, it's a time when that can happen. And I've just found, just driving the car literally, I've let four people out, I've let kids cross the road, keep pumping kindness into the yeah. world. And when you most need it, that kindness will come back at you. Look at the queue at Lidl. See the queue at Lidl. That? Yeah, but the thing is, they're all standing so close <clears throat> to each other. Shouldn't be doing that. Looks like the situation at JFK Airport. Jesus they're creating, Christ, they're people creating... have got to keep their distance. Otherwise we're not going to stop the spread. They're all squished under because it's raining. Everyone's squished up really tight. Anyway, we're on my way to work. Sorry yeah. for that moment, but uh, on the way to work. And what I'm going to try and do today is just try and gather some strength for... Look, look, no, stop. no, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Listen, to... listen. It's really important that people recognise that we want to distract, but we and everyone are feeling the same thing. And I think to feel, to share in this feeling is all right. Mm. It's all right. I honestly. don't want to be burdened because people have got enough on. Do you know, what yeah, I am, absolutely. and here I am sat in my car getting a lift into work, yeah. and it makes me yeah, feel yeah. bad. Yeah. But look, you are also going onto a show to distract people and entertain people. And that is a crucial, think of the entertainment core during World War II, going out to entertain the troops. Yeah. Essentially the, the whole country of the troops, you're going out to entertain them. I hope it's what we try and do on our channel. We try to inform, entertain, distract, and share in authentic feelings. And that's, you know, I think, you know. Mm. Come on, you're a trooper. See it today, you're doing what Nanny Thelma did during the war. You're yeah. going out and you're doing a job No, for I do other see people. that, but I just feel guilty. I was just reading about all the NHS people, you know, and them wanting tests and mm. they're not allowed to have tests and we've got to keep the tubes and buses open for them to get to work, you know, so they travel in danger and then they get to the hospital in danger and I just feel like, you know, here I am in my car, driven by my lovely husband. Some people haven't even got anybody and then to go and do a job where we'll be looked after and... I don't know, I just got, I think my overwhelming thing today is I feel guilty. But you can't not. But I also feel fearful. I feel yes. fearful and I feel guilty. Yeah. So I feel those two things well, at the same time. We spoke, I just spoke to Miranda this morning, our dear friend. And I said to her, I said, is it, are you feeling this? I feel like one minute I have blitz spirit. Yeah. And then the next I have Crushed. just a, a crushing yeah. sadness. That's what I feel. Um, and she said, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's. This is the most bizarre time. It's no getting away from it. Anywho, got my pat lunch. <laughs> it's a text from, you know, I've just got a text from Izzy, so we'll check it. Yeah, I mean, everyone is thinking, everyone's families are stretched across the country too, you know? You know, just remember for people who've got kids at college, yes, there's the disruption, but young adults and kids, as long as they behave responsibly for others, they're going to be fine. Yeah. They're going to be fine. Hi guys, so I'm not entirely sure what Nance is going to be filming today. Um, I'm going to have a little wander around town. A couple of things about this, that, that uh, things have changed so immeasurably. So obviously little luxuries like 
oh, I'll grab a coffee. Uh, I've just seen as I've driven through, I've just come through central London from West London. I've parked in central London. Um, and I'm obviously going to head back to pick up Nads after the show. Um, I'm going to do some work in the car. But uh, um, I'm going to have a wander around and, and, and check out some of the more sort of emblematic streets, locations, spots that have a certain sort of personal resonance too, you know, in Covent Garden and places like that. Uh, but I have to say, I've just driven down Regent Street and I've never, ever seen anything like it. It's it's 940 it would normally be the tail end of a sort of extended rush hour that we have in, in London. It would have been frantic, full, bustling with tourists. Nothing. I mean, nothing. I'm going to walk that far back up to do that. So I found my little nifty uh, spot uh, just off Covent Garden where I could stay for a couple of hours. Um, so I wanted a coffee. I, here's the problem for Mr. Bladderly here. That's what they used to call me at school, bladders, because um, I always needed a wee. I've got one packet of wet ones to take with me in case I n touch something, need to pop in somewhere, because I need a toilet. Toilet, how do I do that? So simple, simple things. Can't buy lunch, Nadia's, I've got a lovely little kind of bircher in a pot back there. Um, I did bring my big camera. I'm going to take some photos and I'm going to film some moments around London. So um, I felt very emotional driving through Regent Street, past Trafalgar Square, through Piccadilly Circus. I'm going to show you the shots in a minute. I presume they're not going to be getting busier anytime soon. Okay, guys, so I've come to the hustly bustly Covent Garden. Covent Garden, normally, it's so, so busy here. I mean, you can't hear yourself. There's street performers, there's, there's people, there's tourists everywhere. Look. Absolutely no one anyway. I'm going to take you into this section here. It's quite, quite uncanny. You know where the um, mistletoe normally is? Is up there? Literally, no one here. I can't actually believe it. This part of Covent Garden is usually where all the street performers are over there. Uh, look, for those of you who know London, Zoe, you're going to get a real sense of just, I, I, I literally can't believe this. And there's a distinct feeling around everywhere. I mean, all the restaurants are closed, many of the shops are closed. And given that we all know that we're potentially going into lockdown in the next 24 hours, 48 hours, I mean, I'm not exaggerating you would be hard pressed at any time of the year, day or night or of the year, to get a shot without a person in it. And right now, I'm struggling to get a shot with a person in it. Phenomenal. Now over here, this is normally the busiest shop in uh, Covent Garden. Um, and as you may know, Apple have closed all their stores, bar the stores in China. Look. Symbolically, a chap there just working on his laptop, maybe in the vain hope that he can get a charger. Let's see what this sign says. That in there is normally heaving. Now, down here, this is normally the busiest bit because, of course, the footfall here goes all the way up to, big, up to Covent Garden Tube Station. You've normally got the uh, street artists standing, you know, painted. Uh, you've got people, hundreds of people milling around. I mean, I can't actually believe this is the run up to uh, Covent Garden Tube Station. Shops are, I mean, sh the shops, some of the shops are open in name. And there's no one going in. There's quite a few people walking around with masks on. Uh, it's incredibly ghostly. Interestingly, as you can see, there look, there's a journalist there, TV crews, tripods, you know, people reporting the fact. I mean, this, this is one of the most sort of illustrative parts of London to show where there aren't people, 
the crowds have diminished up ahead of me now. Let's get a little busy. Look, 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 Covent Garden, shuttered. Covent Garden station, shuttered. And across the road over there, there's a TV crew. This is uh, Long Acre. It's one of the busiest stations in London, this. Covent Garden. Let's see what the sign says. As you can see just behind me, you've got TV crews there. They are reporting on the fact that, I mean, it's absolutely deserted here. Where there's traditionally crowds and crowds of people, there's absolutely no one there. And this is kind of where it breaks my heart. This is, yeah, we're on the start of Neil Street, which is where the girls come to shop. The girls aren't gonna believe this. Absolutely deserted. Okay, so here we are at the epicenter, if you like, of Maddie and Kiki's world. Urban Outfitters shuttered. Uh, I mean, not all shops are shuttered. I guess they're shuttering because of the you know, possibility of looting. That's leading up to the Seven Dials there. And again, this is usually full of media types like me wandering around, tourists wandering around. Last thing you're thinking about buying is a diesel jacket when the apocalypse comes, isn't it? Um, and then look, Neil Street. As a Londoner, this is quite phenomenal. I mean, who'd have thought something would come along that would in many ways potentially replicate the circumstances of war? Um, you know, you often hear people talk about germ warfare. Okay, well, let's forget where this came from. Let's forget who's, you know, what part of the world this originated and who's perhaps responsible for it. If germ warfare were to happen, I'm guessing this is the way in which it would happen. And so London, you know, this bell goes there, is opening. I mean, I can't believe, I mean, they're literally, they're opening, but I guess they're potentially going to get one or two punters coming in. I mean, I'm incredibly self-conscious about whether I go into somewhere where you're in a constrained space uh, and people are touching your food, touching your cups and all that. You know, and increasingly it's just, you know, there's a palpable sense of, well, where you see people, a palpable sense of self-consciousness and self-awareness. I'm now coming up to Seven Dials, which as you know from our Christmas vlog, go to our Vlogmas Christmas, and there's footage of all the lights and people here. So, just talking to two of the contractors there, uh, Matilda, they just came out, and they said they're talking about being off for three months. Look, here's Seven Dials. I mean, it is bizarre. So many different industries, freelance industries as included, are going to be impacted by this. And companies that can hold on to staff, even who are, who are staff, if you like, with staff benefits, can only do it for so long. So, you know, contractors, I mean, this is going to impact on everyone. And of course, the entertainment industry, theatre land all around here, you've got performers who suddenly aren't in a show. Will insurance cover a pandemic? I mean, the complications and the, the microscopic details that have to be thought about when it comes to some kind of rescue package for everyone it, it becomes an unfathomably complicated and enormous concept doesn't it but look there's the road leading up to okay i'm on shaftesbury avenue now and obviously you know popcorn junkies we're big movie fans now look at that it's the odeon closed i'll take us to leicester square in a minute uh but this is shaftesbury avenue it's normally bumper to bumper traffic. I mean, obviously there's some infrastructure kind of stuff, but that, look, that's Shaftesbury Avenue. I've never seen that this like this in my life as a Londoner. This is one of the busiest uh, crossing intersections in London. This is where Charing Cross Road meets Shaftesbury Avenue. Now there's, there's obviously a dribble of traffic but look at the pedestrian situation i mean i <laughs> i mean i've crossed this pedestrian i've crossed this road so many times and you're struggling to get across it so i'm just heading into theater land now which obviously has been talked about a lot they're having to close the theaters further cinemas and what have you but look down there look down there absolutely no one on the road really no one walking no one physically moving. I'm also going to sort of skirt around um, Chinatown, 
get some shots down there but this is the stomping ground this is my this is the area full of pubs full of clubs full of social dining areas you know, this is the area that's going to be so hit uh, and if they go into some kind of lockdown this is where they're going to have to really enact it because it gets you can feel the buildings and the and the businesses and the going concerns it gets tighter and tighter the space between them all you know, there's people with masks everywhere it's um you know this feels like a city preparing well it feels like it's prepared if i'm honest it feels like it's ready and it's like i just spoke to nadia it's a very good sign that the streets are this deserted in many regards it means a lot of people are listening masked that way I tell you I tell you what I am noticing as well as as I walk along as soon as you start to walk towards anyone on foot just as a matter of precaution they're all stepping to the left or to the right good recognize that poster just heading back down to Shaftesbury Avenue theatre land where by all accounts all the theatres have been closed indefinitely for three months now um, but yeah people are actively steering a course around each other which i guess is precautionary and i guess makes sense you know people are you know making space for themselves between each other and so i'm now walking down the central route of chinatown and normally market stalls out everywhere and my heart goes out to the local community here because there's been a lot of race induced attacks racial attacks uh, Chinese businesses are suffering terribly by all accounts. Lots of restaurants are having to close and are being shuttered. Um, but normally there's lots of sort of uh, markets and vegetables and stuff like that being sold here. But uh, look, look at this, it's, it's, it's beyond deserted. And um, an awful lot of people wearing masks. Uh, there's an eerie, eerie silence. Look at that. So Chinatown, you know, again, the businesses here, one wonders whether when we're on the other side of this, whether, you know, businesses and culturally, they're going to be able to recover from this. It's deeply, deeply ironic in a way, isn't it? That it looks at its most beautiful at the moment. All the lanterns everywhere. But it's just, it's just unfathomable what's going on. Oh my God, look, our local cinema, our favorite cinema, the Prince Charles, been boarded up. What does that mean? Been boarded up. Weird. So cinemas, I mean, whether that's to stop looting or does that mean, you know, some of these businesses, their footfall on a daily basis is so critical to their survival that if they lose that a day or two or three, their margin goes and they tip over. But God, that's the Prince Charles being boarded. Lister Square now. Cinema Land, uh, where we record our podcasts, and I can already tell you that what I'm looking at is not a lot. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, we all know what Mr. Square looks like. Jesus. Nothing. So, the centre of Leicester Square, the occasional Deliveroo. Deliveroo are doing very well. Uber Eats and Deliveroo are doing very well. Um, people are wanting their food delivered. Uh, look, they are normally jostling like a madman around here. Uh, there's a thing cleaning the floor up there. Now, call me old fashioned, but a little part of me doesn't want spray back from what it's cleaning on the floor. So I'm gonna try and dodge that cleaner, that street cleaner. There's something about the idea of it. In fact, the point that I'm gonna go this way. What do you think? Do you not think that's firing stuff off the floor? Now, perhaps the one location that is the most sort of symbolic almost of silence and a change of atmosphere here in London 
is Piccadilly Circus, which I'm wandering up to just up ahead. Uh, you know, in New York, we've seen shots of Times Square uh, with virtually one or two people just standing there, all, everything silenced and quiet. Uh, and I'm just walking up now to Piccadilly Circus where I can already see the footfall is virtually non-existent. I'm going to have to just stand here and take this in. I feel a little bit emotional, actually. I feel a little bit emotional. I mean, as a Londoner, you never come here, but as a Londoner, you recognise that these tourist attractions are the heart and soul of the city, this economy. And there's just no one there. In the middle of the day, we're, what are we now, 10 o'clock? I'm just looking up Piccadilly there, which is where you'll have seen us in the vlog, me, Lisa, Nadia and Dina, all going to Fortnum and Mason's. That was a busy old street. You can see down there, virtually nothing. So there's a chap over there telling people in all the years he's never seen it deserted like this. And he's right, it's a shock, it's a shock to the system. Okay, so you go back to our vlog and you'll see lots of footage of us wandering up and down Regent Street, driving along with the lights and all that kind of stuff. And this was the first moment as I was driving down through London where I got a bit tearful as I realized the scale of the already self-enforced kind of isolation, if you like, of the city. Uh, and I'm just gonna flip you around because the arc of Regent Street is usually a, you know, a sort of an image of black cabs, buses, all jostling for position and the, and the sidewalks of the pavements absolutely crammed to the gills. I'm just going to flip you around now. Okay, so I've taken a bit of a pause. I've taken a bit of a pause in filming just because my battery is running low. I've done a complete circuit, Regent Street. I've taken shots, photos. Just want to chart things in this unprecedented at this unprecedented moment really when all Londoners very specifically feel like something's about to uh, change and, and step up to yet another you know to yet another gear but as everywhere I go I keep bumping into the same TV crews clearly garnering the same sort of what they call establishing shots or GVs as they call them general views um, but each time I walk past an emblematic location you're almost tempted you just can't help but pull your camera out and just film it because you just can't believe it. So I'm now gonna scoot down to uh, Trafalgar Square. I always, I always say that Londoners have a relationship with London, a bit like a relationship, like a proper relationship. And right now I'm missing all those things that normally drive me mad about London. And for any of you visitors to London, you'll know what this traditionally looks like. All you can see are the ghostly remains of chalk paintings and drawings on the floor by those people who you know draw things in chalk and you give them a couple of quid that's all that sort of is the evidence of any so that's in front of the national gallery uh, and obviously pigeons are usually just about outnumbered by tourists Nelson's ever felt so lonely. Downing Street down there, Whitehall. This is Trafalgar Square for God's sake. This is Trafalgar Square. And look, there's just no one at the side cafes. Just no one here. And in the distance there you can see Big Ben. 
just about looking over things. So, so here's the thing guys, as we were saying last night in the Mental Health Live, we've got one of two choices here. Yes, there are gonna be moments where we are all worried, we're all fearful, we all are sad, we feel sorry for ourselves and each other. But then we, we know that as a city, London, and as a country, we can overcome this. We know what we need to do, and it's about being responsible. So I hope that after having seen all these shots and all these, all these kind of photographs and all these clips and everything of London today, anyone who wants to pretend this is just the flu, it might only be as dangerous or less dangerous than the flu to you, but this isn't about you. This is about everyone. And it's about the most vulnerable, the most needy, and maybe people you don't even know. But hey, isn't the human capacity for empathy and kindness more important than anything else right now? So, bless him, Mark's picked me up from work. This is gonna be our sort of new normal for a bit. Try and hold off getting the virus for as long as possible, hey? <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a good day. It was a good day. Um, there was a couple of moments in the breaks when me and the other loose women, when news was coming in and we, our hearts went down a bit and we were like, oh God, and you know, should we be sitting here? Should we be being silly and frivolous and funny? And, and actually our director was great. He came through our ear and he said, don't, he goes, this is exactly what people want. So we just pulled ourselves back up, got on with it. There was some news coming in that Jane had and it was just like, oh, about somebody that was, um, somebody that she knew that knew somebody else that was that was gone into hospital so yeah it sort of threw us a bit um but yeah it was done it's done it's strange everyone every single person's got a new normal so that's that's two shows now with no audience well no i think it's even more complicated than that i think every day is a new normal for everyone mm. because actually today i feel as flat as a fucking pancake mm. so uh what's normal today might have been normal yesterday it won't be normal tomorrow it's really weird mm. it's like everything's up in the air it's mm. like all the kind of weird structures and cornerstones of everything right down to how you walk down a street mm. have changed mm. it was interesting we had roman kemp on today young man he's got the radio show you know on um is it hot yeah. martin kemp's son and his mum came in and he said this will be the last time he's seeing his mum for a very long time. Everything will be FaceTime. He's now just work and home, work right. and home and why, nothing why, why else. Jesse's done a lot on the shows with a doctor and he said that he's just made that, that the decision as the most sensible right. decision. Yeah. So I wonder how many more people are making that kind of decision now this weekend, you know, yeah. with Mother's Day and stuff. If I, if I had to compare the two days, I'd have said Central London seemed a bit busier today than yesterday. I worry mm, that, that, worry. that Boris's softly approach last night is making people think it doesn't matter. And then you've got the head of Weatherspoons coming on saying it's important people keep using pubs and they stay open. What a moron. Fucking moron, sorry. When all these scientists' yeah. advices do not do yeah. that. Absolute moron. Oh, God. I'm just looking through a cardo and I can't quite believe it. Every single page, every single page, all it says is out of stock, out of stock. It doesn't matter what you're looking for, it's all out of stock. It's incredible. It doesn't matter whether it's facial wipes, milk, crisps, bread, floor cleaner, wallpaper paste. It's like people have bought everything, everything possible that you could want over, a, over years. There's nothing. And none of this, in lockdown countries, people are uh, tweeting me and Instagramming saying in lockdown countries, this isn't the case. So it is sheer panic. That's all, it's not, it's, this is madness. Every single thing. Wow. Even unwaxed limes. Oh, look at you, you are good, cleaning off everything. God, it feels like the fight gets bigger and bigger, don't you? So, two things. I went to the petrol station because my tyres needed filling with air and there was a queue coming out onto the street for petrol. I need to get petrol tomorrow morning because of people queuing for petrol. Uh, and then went to my friend's shop down the road who I saw last night. She was crying last night, asking me how serious it is. She was really worried, bless her. And then tonight she says, 
that she's had someone in the shop who had it. Saying they had it? Saying they, they came in, oh yeah, I've been to Italy, I had it. It seems to be every arsehole Why don't who people went to Italy. stay in? For why fuck's why is sake? everyone who's been to Italy so fucking cocky? Not everyone about isn't. It. Come on, Mark. Don't no, but make a us... lot of them are very cocky. No, but not everyone. No, don't no, no. Say all right, everyone. not everyone. I right. just get very protective of everyone. So anyway, he came in and she was like, oh, right, okay. And he said, oh, it was just, I just had a cold and a sniffle. Which again, is the case. But it made, isn't it terrible? It made me want to clean everything I know. in even more detail. I don't even... it, doesn't it make your heart swell again for people with OCD, Mark? Oh my what God. What they're bloody going through. Well, I mean, I'm really worried I'm going to cross over because it's just, I, I mean, I'm now breaking down every single action. Yeah into every constituent part. That's what I'm doing. It's weird. It's so it unlike us. It must be so us. exhausting for someone who's it's kind so of... It's unlike us, isn't it? Oh, anyway. Mm.